Welcome to another um, segment of the Drexel SEMA show. And today my guest is Lorenzo Caesar. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity of having Lorenzo on the show because sometimes it's very challenging getting someone to come on the show to talk about their, their story. And so I'm grateful that Lorenzo has agreed to be on my show. Lorenzo has, you know, he was in prison about, I think, four, five or six times. We want to hear, you know, his story, you know, how did he end up in prison, um, why did he, you know, commit those crimes. And we also want to hear how he is now transformed his life. And, and hopefully um, his message will inspire those persons who are committing crimes and those who plan to commit crimes. Hopefully after listening to Lorenzo, that they'll be, they'll have some type of hope and also transform their lives. So with that said, I just want to take this opportunity again to welcome Lorenzo Zizu to my show. Lorenzo, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lorenzo Delano Caesar, okay. and I was born in Grand Tech, originally born in Grand Tech, but I grew up in Provo. Um, it was amazing growing up in Provo, so um, I just delighted to be on the show to basically shed light on all of this darkness and just so that you guys would know that it could be hope after this. So thank you for having me on the show. Very good, very good, Lorenzo. Um, so Lorenzo, you're now almost 40 years old now? You could say about that. Almost 40. Almost 40. Um, I know, um, I met you, I think, about a year or two ago when you started coming to our church. Yes. And then since then, I knew you got into some trouble with the law. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was your first encounter when you, um, Prior to you tell me, you know, you went to to prison and not maybe about six times, but you got off and all that. Yeah, yeah. What was your first, um, what was the first thing that happened? And how did it happen? Why did it happen? All right, let me see. Instead of putting it in a nutshell, I would really just be as open as possible. I appreciate and that. And I know we probably be on time, so I would probably be That's as, fine. you know. Mm -hmm. So, it all started off with, let's say, getting on a habit. And the habit was drugs. So you were, you were literally taking drugs? Yes, yes. Okay. So, see, with the deception of it, it was, in the beginning, fun. We call it fun, in the beginning. But then, when time goes on, this fun turned into, I got to maintain this habit now. So is it because you became addicted? Or? Because I became addicted to the drugs. So now it's like, it makes you lazy. You don't want to work anymore. So now you're not making honest money anymore because then eventually you lose your job and you lose your integrity. So you end up out on the streets. Mm -hmm. and but well, how did you get involved in drugs? In okay, the that's a good how, how question. That's a good question. Case. To be honest, um, while growing up in the home, it was just my mom and my sisters, and my brothers, but... I was saying you were in a single parent yes, home. Yes, a single parent home, you know, and that's a big toll on, on, on society right now. So just to, not to drift away from the question, but that's okay. we as fathers are about to be fathers, we need to step up. But absolutely, it is like um, I went into the streets and I started hanging out with some fellas older than me because then I was looking for this father figure. So it was it was more fun to be with the older fellas. You understand? And they basically was not a good role model that I know now. But then. It was like they was my best role models. So if your father was in your home, 
You don't think he would have gone that route? No. You know, because I cannot, well, we don't know what would happen. To be stuff. honest, to be, that's a good question. To be honest, if my father was in the house and he was, a, was, a, was or is a man of integrity and structure, I could have been watching him and patterning him. Mm-hmm. I could have been like, you know what? I never see my dad smoke drugs or I never see my dad abuse alcohol or abuse my mom. That didn't really make mm-hmm. me to go out in society and say, okay, that's my role model. But then I gone and I took the, 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 the role, the, the, the streets role model from the guys in the streets, mm-hmm. so to say hood or, or gang leaders or whatever you want to call it. You say what I'm saying? Because so why, why did you go that route? Why didn't you go to a church or why did you go to the, to the, to the gangs? All right, to be honest, I mean, like, um, my mentality was in church, to be honest. It okay. was in church. So, see, I'm not going to come on this show and, and, and sugarcoat nothing or try to make up no stories, like, straight up. It was just, like, the mentality was because of the influence of the music I was listening to mm. and the uh, programs I was watching and stuff like that. It led me to be around some of the wildest guys Interesting. And the streets. I yeah. interesting because I had my son on the show and that's the same thing he said. Oh, okay. He said, it's the music that we listen to. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, that's being real. Right. That's being real. That's being real. Mm-hmm. Because, all right, boom. So, so, now, this way it got interesting. After being influenced by the music and the, and the programs and stuff like that, it, it, it works up the top level voice that you hear in your mind because everybody could admit to this that they would hear a good voice and they would hear a bad voice absolutely i agree with that <laughs> you just see where it's coming from it's like so voices exactly in your head, in your yeah. head. Mm-hmm. hands down i know we're going to have some agreement to this now it's like which one is going to have the 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 the, the, the dominance it's like it's like okay you you start a little campfire and you throw wood in it, you throw wood in it, the fire can blaze, the fire can blaze. So it was like the, the bad voice, I was, I was feeding it more than the good voice. So it was like, you know, all right, these are your homeboys. All right, let me go chill with these dudes, you see? And after chilling with them, they, they would be like, you know, boy, you know what's cool? Man, when you, when you smoke this weed or you smoking and things like that, it give you... It it, 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 it it boosts you up, you could go and talk to girls better, you could, yeah, you know, you could, you could it, it help you to focus better, it's this, that, and the other, and you being young and, I can say it straight up, dumb, you being young and dumb, because then, at the end of the day, <laughs> you know what I mean, so, so, so that's a better you mm-hmm. said, to, but to be honest, it's like, you never know. You never knew what you know now. Right. You say what I'm saying? Right. So you accept all that right. garbage. You accept all that. And now when you get all that garbage in your system, like I say, in the beginning it was all fun and games. It was all cool and things until reality kick in, and then you know mm-hmm. you ending up. You like you getting in trouble for the first time. So after you, okay, so how old were you when you, when you started taking drugs? About 19. You are 19. About 19. And then these drugs make you put thoughts in your mind. Yeah. Saying yeah. these but bad voices. Not the cut you, it's like, like, after, like, when you, all right, it's like, there's something that the streets can, could relate with this. this mm. It's called a Jones. A Jones? A Jones. That's the state. What I mean. Okay, I can break it down for you right now for like <laughs> the people who don't really know. Mm-hmm. But this Jones is where the problem comes in because it's like you don't have it. When you don't have the drug of your choice, you're miserable. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you're logical to cuss out anybody. You, you, you're logical to go and do anything to go get these drugs. It's now, guess what? When you get the drugs, the Jones phase is over. Mm. It's like, it's like you, you, you be like, did I really do that? Mm. Or you, it, it's like you back wake again. It's after you get, after you get what, you, what you want. 
You understand? So it's called a Jones. The Jones is the danger of it all. Oh, I never heard okay, that. yes, okay. Uh, plenty of people watching the show and from the streets, they're going to really say, that's it. Okay. That's it. Because, you know, like I say, I ain't coming to sugar coat. No, no, I appreciate yes, you yeah. educating us. Yeah. So, so after you so at 19, you started taking drugs. Mm -hmm. Abuse and, and alcohol too. Alcohol too? Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, what was your first crime? My first crime was... Um, I could say tough. Yeah. Okay. Tough. So, it was like so you on drugs at that time when you yeah were, yeah yeah and you and why did you steal? Is it because you why it's, did you it's, steal? It's because I was in the Jones phase. I read cause see, um, like when you starting off in this right, it has been lavishly because you because it's, it's a whole enemy thing. Like let's just establish this. Is it's a whole warfare we going in. It's a whole warfare we're going in. So the enemy, we will call the devil the enemy. It's like he makes sure you get a lot of it in the beginning. Like I say, it was so, it was like, yeah, 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 I could do this. And you didn't experience, you, you didn't know that you can experience the part when you don't have the money to buy it and you can't, and it didn't even be lavish no more. That's when the Jones phase kick in. Okay, so you, so you ran out of money. Exactly. So... The Jones face kicking meaning, all right, this day I wanted to smoke and I wanted to, to drink and to, to, to my leisure and pleasure, but I don't have the funds. So you stole somebody else's money? So I went and I stole somebody else's money. And to do what? To satisfy my Jones. And then and did you get, and, and, and so that was the first grand robbery. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, you got caught? Um, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't get caught like, like for the first time or nothing like that. Like I say, it's it, 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 not a whole deception. And a better word to use than, 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 than for like people who would understand this thing called Jones is craving. Okay. Craving. Anybody, it's just like you will crave a chocolate cake. I understand. Or you will crave vanilla pudding or whatever. <clears throat> so, but out in the streets we say Jones, mm -hmm. you know, but... The deception happened again. I want y'all to catch this. I want y'all to really catch this. It's like the deception happened again. I got away. The money was good. It made me. You mean when you say got away? I, I mean, you, it's like I. I it's you, like you were stealing, but you didn't get caught. I, I didn't get caught. So the enemy was setting me up for failure again. You see how it worked out? I got set up for failure by in the beginning getting these drugs free and lavishly. But then I reached to a phase now where... But you paid for the drugs. It wasn't free. You just stole something. No, basically, basically, I didn't want to jump the gun. It was like when, when, when I was getting set up to be on drugs, it was like my friends. Remember we talking about this? I wouldn't say my friends, but it was the company I was uh -huh. keeping in and the environment that I was in. They basically give it to me. Oh, I see. You see where I'm coming from? So it was like... I always thought I was going to be given this and I was always going to have this opportunity to it was always going to be like this so it was it was a deception you understand yeah. because it was there lavishly but then when reality is sinking you have to pay for it I have to pay for it I have it, it costs us you see what I'm saying so so it, it going down to say okay I gotta go get this money and apparently I mean eventually I was in record I wasn't working, so boom. It's like, all right, yeah. So you were not scared, like, you know, that you get caught mm. robbing people? No, no. You went to homes? So you it's, like I, it's like I went in homes. I like I went in homes, to be honest. I went in homes. And but you, you didn't fear, like, these individuals that you went into their homes like, and they have a gun? Like, like, to be honest, the fear was there, you know, but the craving was there also. That was more important. The craving. Getting the money to buy the drugs. The craving was higher than the fear of not going. I see. So the danger about this is the craving. Okay. The craving to lead anybody out on drugs to doing some things that it wow. seems like it's impossible, wow. but you just you just gotta go there and get it. You just risk it. You just risk it. That's the wow. that's the that's a good way to put it. Wow. You just risk it. And then let me show you, like I was saying. It was another big setup. See the risk that you that I took. 
I end up finding lavish amount of money, jewelry, and all kind of stuff. Okay. So I was like, yeah, you know. So I was like, man, that's easy, you know what I mean? Because I always thought I would have been going, finding this quick money and stuff like that, and jewelry and stuff like that, and getting away. Until the very day I got caught up. Mm -hmm. Now, how you get caught? Now, how I do to get caught up is this day, me and accomplice, we went about because. You know, we went about and we went um, basically to get money to go satisfy our craving, which is our Jones. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we was in the place, certain things. Now, the alarm system, people start picking oh, up on So, <laughs> so yeah, people start getting advanced, you know what I mean? You so, no, 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 it wasn't was like that. It was like we, we, we just run into the wrong house because at the end of the day, it was like really, you know, it was really some well equipped people because we, like, basically, we never used to, like, like, and I ain't trying to use this as no brag, but we never used to really like rob like the poor people. We just basically used to go in the up the rich end, area. yeah, the rich area. So at the end of the day, it was like this laptop was plugged in, and as soon as we unplug it, the alarm hit off. Unplug the laptop. Yes, and the alarm. Some way the system hooked up to like the electronics. Like if certain things be missing, the alarm. It sensor the alarm. So I said, yeah, I didn't know y'all could stop it up like that, you know what I mean? So we grabbed everything and we got out of there and before we could even make it anywhere, the police was done on us. The police oh, was on you us. You got caught. Yeah, and, I got and caught. You had masks? No masks, no gloves, because all right, it's like when you when you first started out and you went in the system, is impossible because we just doing it and doing it and getting away and getting away so you did it leaving multiple yes multiple times because so like, okay so out of curiosity mm -hmm. how many times did you rob before you got caught it's sad to say but we we, we, we like we burglarized a whole neighborhood wow <laughs> a whole phase and it was wow. like the last one the last one was the one that it was like a summertime it was summertime and basically basically just just you know start smoking and stuff like that in the summertime coming and it was right. like the end of the summer so everybody was getting ready to get back to go to school and some people was just getting ready to get back to like leveling it down you know because the hype of summer over so so sad so done we go on there and mess with this house and just like when we was about to like thinking we can come up it was a setup for failure so the police was they, they was really they was on top they 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 operate well you know, this, uh, yeah like, they this area is on or? they they no they they, they came and it was actually cid squad it was mm -hmm. the criminal investigation department squad it was in like the police with the sirens and stuff like that's why they could have really catch up on us quickly like that and to be honest it was like getting away but we got caught up and i didn't get catch to be honest one of my friends got catching automatically he gave me up oh, yeah so when he gave me up you know i still was living with my mom at that time so i i say all right summertime over so I, there's no more sleeping out and no more so i know i had to turn myself in and i um turn myself in Okay. I turned myself in, and, and the Lord, yeah, the Lord, and the and Lord, the Lord dealt with me. And no, I didn't. To be honest, I didn't went to prison for that for that time there. I didn't went to prison for that time there, but that was the time that I got exposed okay. to see. I Even was, though you turned yourself in, they didn't take you to court. At the time, they we had a we had a a law that if you like still as a teenager, they take you to they take me to court, you know, but they put me on probation. I see. Okay? I see. So it was like, I didn't even self get, I wasn't even at the age or, or at the time because you had to be like 20 and up to go behind in the cell. Okay. As long as it's a it teenager, 19 or 18, 16, 17, you, they would have you out in the front by a bench. You'd be sit out in the front and they would call your parents. 
So I yeah, I went through that phase there. And that's when I when like uh, exposure to like see, that's why we gotta be real with our children. Yeah. You know, we gotta be real because my mom didn't have no idea what was going on mm. until it was like I would see it was like too late. And like yes, I used to tell my mom a lot of stuff. Me and I had the best of relationship, but certain things it was like like I didn't want to tell her. I just want to keep it a secret because then. But then we okay. Like when you when you went out to do the robberies. Mm -hmm. Your mom didn't ask you where you were, or you, you lied and just like, you somewhere else. Like no, I used to like like wait till the summertime come around. Like I would say, I I wouldn't say this uh, experience of every summer. This just was one of the summers that really was the worst mm -hmm. summer of my life when I really got it. When I really started drugs, mm -hmm. you say saying. But some people say, oh, marijuana is not a drug. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people they say that. But then yet, yet still, they, they would see, or oh, it's a drug in a medical form. It's still drugs. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I understand. Okay, so, so and, it, and it was the mere fact of me getting in a phase, like we're going way right back, but we can still, phase. the Jones phase. <laughs> yeah, 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 because that's what that. I want. Yeah. Yeah, I used to that, that yes, technology. Yes, I really want. I got to do some research on that. Mm -hmm, I really want, I want to expose this. It's like, it's like, a lot of people holding it in. They saying, "Oh, it's drugs." No, it's not drugs. Because if you get the drugs all the time, you you wouldn't go all the way to do certain things. Some people maybe don't really? teeth. Yeah, some people will go and lie. So it happens when you are not on drugs. No, it happens when you don't have the drugs or the you don't have the money to purchase the drugs to so get on drugs. to get on the drugs. You see what I'm saying? So it brings so up. you on drugs, you're saying you're okay. You're okay. Really? Yeah, but they, they wouldn't expose us. They wouldn't say, but a lot of people don't like to admit the facts that they chosen or craving. Oh, wow. And they will make the world look pretty craving. You see? Wow. It's like it's like a pregnant woman. Then she pregnant and she want her lobster. What do you, you got to bring for her? Her lobster. She would make noise. She would, she would, because it's like, she can't control the urge. And it's like you can't control the edge of it and don't talk if it's like cocaine or 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 or, or the where they get these things going around now, Mollies and and, 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 and and so it's like whole different levels of Johnson, you know what I mean? Wow. So yeah, so so that that's some of going on and then, and it happened to show me that I got caught up in the system, but I never I still had a fear of going to prison. So I was like, Lord, no, don't let me go to prison. I, I, I got religious crack. I oh, okay. <laughs> you, 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 you stole some stuff, mm -hmm. and then you turn around and, and pray to God, tell God to let you go to prison. Lord, for, please for, help for me. Yes, well. I was like, no, I, I ain't gonna do it no more. I said, I start cutting dates. I start cutting dates. I ain't gonna do it no more. And you know, I mean, like that goes to show me that God honors prayers and stuff because, like, to be to to, to keep it real. I didn't end up in prison, you know, I was... But then when you were stealing, mm -hmm. you I didn't think about nope. God? Nope, 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 nope. I didn't think about so God. you start thinking about God when you it's after like, the wake-up call? Like, when you're back, yes, against okay. the wall, you know, I was like, I was in the hot seat. And I was thinking, oh, this can be prison and things like that. And, you know, the movies had me and everything like that. But, but, but it was like, it was a wake-up call for me, you know, okay. because at the end of the day, I would have wished I'd have went to prison because what my mother did to me, mm. it was, I, I would have preferred to be away from her, but she really broke me up. She really put some licks on me. It, 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 it sharpened me up in a way too, you know, because at that time she still was coming down hard on me, you know. Right. I was still living under her roof and things like that, but, but at that time, you know what I mean? I understand. I reached to a place. All right, see, is right now I can see the generation it getting better and better because like most of the ignorance that I was doing out there in the streets I never bring it home to my mom so you say the generation is getting better it's getting better better because like you mean worse what all right yeah let me say like that from bad to worse okay let me use okay. proper English I, no, I, that's okay, okay? That's okay. From, so we used to be talking these little... Don't worry about that. I understand. Yeah. Then so, okay. Better from, or ready, man. Better. No, again, from bad to worse. Okay. Because, all right, it's like this. 
I can be I can be straight up because a lot of people might watch this stuff and they know when they when it's Lorenzo Caesar right now. You say say like out on the streets, right? I would have had a reputation as small as I look, and a lot of those couldn't have beat me. You say it's saying? They were scared of you. A lot of those couldn't have beat me. Let me just say, I know say nobody was scared of me because they used to come try, but then they used to say small axe cut down big tree. Let's leave it like that. But, but when I go home in my mommy house and she hears certain things, she'd be like, it can't be. You know what I mean? Because I was like, still like, yes, mom, no, mom, so, yeah. hugging her, kissing her. So the attitude that you display at home um, is a whole different attitude in the streets. For my day in the streets, you know what I mean? I got you. And see, like, while I look at this generation now, they come home and be bad to the parents, bad at home, coming home stinking dope and, and stuff like that. I, I used to actually have a stash outside to where I try to brush my teeth or put toothpaste in my mouth before I go inside the house because I won't go around my, my, my old lady smelling like, like drugs and stuff like that. But like I say, it got to the point where the supply, I couldn't supply myself anymore. Because then I couldn't, I couldn't take the little, like the little bit of money that she would have given me, or the little money, honest money I got. You would go and just get a, a quantity, but that would not be sufficient for you at that time. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then there's more things you want to do. So when you when you start going about with this, because it didn't start off with no robbery. Like I wasn't going to nobody house pulling no gun on them at that time. It was like wait till you go out your house and then it would do burglary. We getting there. Okay. We getting there. We getting okay. there. <laughs> we getting there. Like I, like I, like I, like I, like I want to take this by the step by I step understand. because at at the end of the day, it went from okay. I can wait till you go out, burglarize, and then sometimes you only find chump change and you get a little bit of stuff, and you be like, nah, see nothing, because then you don't you get introduced to uh, the prostitutes. Cause now, okay, you want to go. So you need money to go. Yeah, you need so money to go. you need money to go. You need money for drugs, money for alcohol, and, and money for prostitutes. Mm. Okay, so now that become a craving too. All right, so you, you need see? money for sex, alcohol. Okay, drugs. yes, and, and and working was in the option. So why? Because it's the mentality, the, the gangster mentality. Let me be real with you. It was like the gangster mentality. Is either. It's either you go out there and trap, meaning you go out there and sell the drugs, or you go out there and, 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 and the only way I can see it to say hustle mm. is you selling drugs. Because the reason I say why, because a lot of people complain that one of the reasons why people are committing crimes is because they cannot find a job. But you're saying on your experience, not, that was not even an option. No, it wasn't an option. So jobs were there. Jobs were there. You're just not interested. You wanted the fast money. The f because the fast money was more money. The job money was like, I had to go literally go work and for work. a whole week and wait till the week That's comes nice. just for a little couple of dollars that nice. ain't, that just, I can keep it real. That wow. just can blow. That just can blow. Because, wow. Because like you're I, making sense. Yeah, it's it's, it's facts. You say saying because it ain't nothing like I like I say, like what I was saying earlier. But then I can say it again. I didn't read this from the book or watch this on TV. This was the process of me getting to where I am yeah, today. That's, that's the life you lived. It's the life. It's the life that I that I passed through. You say mm -hmm. saying because at the end of the day, I take a, I take this as a big opportunity. I was in. You see, greed have something to do with it too. I think greed has a lot to do with it. Uh, okay, greed, greed is a, is a, is like. I believe that's why there's so many crimes now. Exactly. Because of greed. Exactly. Exactly. Because then, okay, if we can go to it, if we can just touch this topic for a little bit, you could have make ends meet for you and your family. I could have been making ends meet for me and my you family. You set up someone to, yeah. to lose their life. Because agreed, that somebody would. I wouldn't say I did it. No, no. But, I but you. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it would happen. Mm -hmm. It would happen. Okay. I see what you're saying. Though. Basically, what I'm saying is really facts of what I see and know out there on the streets. Yeah. Not saying that I pinpoint or calling nobody mean. But the, the the fact of it is, a lot of things happening inside our society is because of greed. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Absolutely. So. So when I look at it now, the first experience of prison, that's, 
that's the part. Because then, remember, I, I, I just to turn 20, going for 21, 20. So like two years later. Yeah, two years later, I started getting back into, because then I then started, I, I say, okay, I out here on my own, I ain't too much messing around with my, my old lady, because wow. I don't, yeah. Because see, like when you get, see, and a lot of people, they selfish, they don't really care about their family. Yeah. And I start getting involved with some heavy duty things. So I say, man, if any pressure can come my way, I, sorry for talking all this broken English, but no, I'm, I'm if, so. if, any, if any pressure coming my way, I ain't gonna make it reach my mommy mm -hmm. or my sister's too innocent. Mm -hmm. I put myself, I yeah, I put myself in a position where I was actually living in the hood, mm -hmm. you see? So, so after that, you know, I get, I get more wilder. Because oh, after you start living in the hood. Yeah, after I, st I, 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 I moved from around my, my mom and started living in the hood. And the thing about it is, I was like the type who used to say, they have a saying, say, less, go. I was gone before you say less. And, and plain people look at me as the little one inside of the group. So I always used to have to fire. You say what I'm saying? So it was like everything that basically. <laughs> Shame to say, everything that was basically happening in those days when, when I was in my, my younger adolescent days, when I was wild and crazy, everything was basically happening. They was like, man, let's go look for Lorenzo. Let's go Lorenzo, 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 Lorenzo. Really? I'm telling you, Lorenzo, Lorenzo. They so, you get it done. Because I can go and I can get it done. Because at the end of the day, I never had the mentality I have right now. Because it also, see, it also deals with your mentality too. See, my mentality was, okay, these dudes looking up at me as a leader. So I wanted to portray that image. I wanted to keep that image. It was like a, it was like a, it was like a hype. I see. It was like a hype. Yes, yes. So yeah, I, you had a, yeah, yes, yes. You're a leader, you got to act yes, a leader. Yes, And you know, influencing. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, that's a big danger. Because even if you want out, somebody can come around you and be like, man, we, like you got soft on us, man, what going on? At that time, let me let you know, in the streets right now, as we speak, you may have dudes out there as the biggest and the macho is, but on that one-on-one -on -one time with they self, they want out. Because they're tired of toting the guns, they're tired of, oh, they will never know who can get them, you see what I'm saying? But we, we may portray an image out there and say and act like, oh man, I never scared and things like that. But at the end of the day, when you look into the eyes of somebody you either fall in love with or it could be your child, it could be, you can always be like, man, I did, but I won't get out of this. But then you can always have that, the, 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 the person, see, I always had this person who would have looked up to me and he would have been like, yo, I got something for us to check now, how it go. And then I'd be like, yo, man, let's go. Just because I'm trying to still live up to that image. But inside myself, I don't really want it. Mm -hmm. I don't really want it, to be real. And, wow. and a lot of people are going to agree with this. This is when you really know yourself. Or who for you, or who against you. Now I end up in prison. All these dudes, I was, I was, I talking about hyperbole. What I mean by hyperbole, I was basically... Use my boy, anybody play with you. you ain't right, right or wrong, I protected them. But now I end up in prison. Who sent me a box? Meaning, who sent me some, some people that you look up, who's looking out for? Exactly. Not checking for you while you're in prison. Nope. Only person I could have really seen, mom, who my seeing mother, who I turned my back on and things like that. It was her voice that I used to have to hear to calm myself down when I end up yeah. in prison. Because mothers, yeah, mothers I like to make no matter what they do. Sorry, but I would like to make this point clear. We need to try set up another system in the Turks and Caicos Island than just sending these young people to prison. Because before I end up in prison, it was like a certain level of badness I would have do because of the fear of going to prison. Now the judge was basically my, but this we talking about my first time in prison now. Mm -hmm. The judge basically was trying to do something he probably thought was a good thing. Because he was saying, or oh, they're trying to see if they could have scared me straight. But 
I sent you to prison. I sent him to prison, but the prison didn't change you. It made me worse because now when I end up inside prison, remember, I was in no little, little small little fry. I was in, I was in no. You see, I really, I, I was, yeah, I was really out there in the street. So when I end up inside prison, the same gangsters in the street, those no matter what side they from, whatever part of poverty they was from. They was in prison, so when they see me come, oh, Lorenzo, yo, you here, you here, you there, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? So it was like, still smoking weed. You smoke weed in prison? Yeah, still How smoking weed. Well, like some, I, I come and meet some of the older fellas. They had the connection and things like that, and wow. get the weed coming, and basically it was so like, just like you still. In the it was just like I still it's in the street. Like you in, yeah, you go like places. go places and have you free meal, but you, yeah, you can find like everything there except you can't get a woman. I understand. You, you get alcohol, you get everything. You wow. get access to phone, everything. Sometimes they used to have the tap tap phone. We used to call the tap taps. It's not like the smartphone. But like nowadays, the smartphones and everything is there, you see, but, wow. but like, let me and show so, you. And so because you did the same thing you did in prison, yeah. you did in the street, you're saying it made you worse. And, and let me sh- no, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me make it clear. It's not because of the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's because of the mentality. I see. You see? Okay. It's like. I was thinking at first, boy, when I go to prison, somebody can rough me up. This could happen. They can, they could kill me. That and you know what I said. But now, when I went there, and I see how it was, it gave me a mentality, you know. But it gave me of the wrong mentality because now it's like this how easy this place is. Prison life wasn't rough. I was like, man, this ain't rough, man. It's like, man playing things I was holding on and it's like man somebody played me the wrong way man like, I'll bust the head open and just go to prison and just lay up you see what I'm saying and that's a bad mentality yeah. we would say oh saying these things is nothing but that's that's so, just be careful what you say so do you think that if we were to make prison life rough it would have changed you you had different mentality to be real yeah okay like for my first time yeah okay. like 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 okay, we, uh, we eventually had him straight to this di- this direction because we're talking about how it began for me, and I'm basically coming on your show or, or or speaking to your audience or especially the young people to say, get off of it. I show you a road how to get off of it because yes, because I was in it, and basically I don't know if they could see this, but this same Usher, brother Lorenzo. And this basically is my um, church clothes, and it, we'll be talking from the beginning of this. I was never see my thought I would see myself. You never imagine. I would never even imagine myself on this show trying to really say, y'all could, it's a possibility for y'all to get out of it. So now, the mentality that I got when I first ended up in prison for the first time, and see how slack it was, but I came back in front of the judge. That's a big thing right there. Deception is dangerous as greed. Because now... So, okay. How long you in prison the first time? I didn't... I do like three weeks. Three weeks. Oh, because okay. then, very yeah. It was very short. It was, it was like a three weeks phase of let him go up there, see how it feel, and then come back for the next... Next, like, just before the month, like, end, or for the next following month. Okay. You understand? Right. So, the judge now... When I, when I went back to court for, for a different case no for the same thing for the same, oh, okay. see I was in I was in I was in sentence it was like the use of like, a terminology of saying remanded until trial I see so okay? you were not charged right? or I was charged convicted. I wasn't convicted right. I was charged but see like I say he wanted me to experience or experience that he didn't know I can't blame him because at the end of the day he didn't, like if I wasn't connected to the streets the way I was, it probably would have worked because then I wouldn't have had those them, the, the hardcore gangsters respecting me and things like that. They probably would have come and, and try to be, try to get me scared, but they know that wouldn't have worked on the Lorenzo season, you know what I mean? <laughs> so they, they had no other choice but to say, well, look at boy, smoke, do this, do that, because they know, all right, yeah. But at the end of the day, when I went back to court, I deceive him. 
I wasn't real with him. I deceive him. That's what I do. Huh. That's what I do. That's how I deceive him. Man, man, you know, man. I've been so rough for me, man. I mean, like, they put me in the back of the line to eat. They just pushing me on the line and all the time. I never hardly had to do line. My food come VIP, this and that. And it was so different. It was like, but I say what I I said. How he pictured it in his mind, like did he, what like did he really send me up there to do? Like they would have bully me. They would have do this. They would do that. I make it like it was the worst so experience you ever. Feel that he achieved the purpose for what he sent you to. Exactly. That's why I say this. I mean, deception okay. is dangerous. You see what I'm saying? So he's like, I. So that's why he wanted you to learn. So now I can I can release you free to go because I hope you never. You know what I mean? And then, and I work on my behalf because now I, I I back I back on the streets again. I I behave myself for a while though. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. I behave myself for a while. Like, that was that was that was like what early that was in two thousand and six or five. It was okay. like yeah early in them years there. So I I started working. How long was the, when you say behave yourself for a while? How long was that behavior for? Hmm. That's a while. Well, a while for me was like two months. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two months stop okay. was like a year. That that felt like I'd be here for a year. I mean, like to be After real. two months, mm -hmm. you went back to after the after way you used to live. Yeah, yeah. But then it got it acts it got higher. That's what I really wanted to say. They need to open up a facility. That's called or uh, either a man facility or a juvenile hall for, for, for the youth stand. Because guess what? Sending uh, it happened to me. Sending me to prison as a young man. It gone from me thinking burglary to thinking robbery now. I can throw a gun now, I won't catch you in the room now. I being real. I being real, bro. It's because because of you. The no, because I, the, the people I went around here, they was talking like, boy, how they used to do this and the kind of money. Oh. And I and I listened. I was like, you know, I was I listened. I was like, so yeah. You, you got ideas. It was like I went to like a school for criminology. You see what I'm saying? So I got different ideas. Cause I thought I didn't know everything, but then I was like, wait, I know nothing yet. I was like. That's the kind of money you all make. Everybody is exposed to what the uh, exposed to the adults who was doing higher crime. So mm -hmm. me as a juvenile, hearing some of the things with these adults doing, I was like, boy, we can't wait till we link up on the road. Straight up, I can't wait till we. Link. Even if I don't link up with you, I already know what you know, and I go on the road, start exactly. my own little things, and mm -hmm. me, and my little crew, we going to try that. We can do that. You see? So my mind, my mentality change. You see what I say? So what I was saying is, and the nowadays, especially how it is now, they need to stop sending them youths to them to the place. And some of them only can be to the point where they remind it, and then they can be free, not even convicted. So they're already putting a stain on them. Because when society see you go to prison, they don't even know if you guilty or not. They done. Saying that well, you'll be in prison, you could probably do time. Mine, you could come, go to court, win your case, and that is, is it would not be a day on your on your police racket. But in the racket of people, mine, they'd be like, like in my in my situation, they'd be like, "But well, you've been to prison six times." But the only time could have come is like what we can get to is when I got caught up with the gun, and I and I and I did do actually I was sentenced. You see where I'm coming from, but. But at the end of the day, it was mostly reminded, reminded, reminded. You see? And it was because... See, I ain't trying to justify wrong. It, I believe it was the purpose of God at the end of the day. And yes, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I'm a man of God now. But in those times, it was so wide for me. I didn't understand it. It was like always an obstacle coming my way that caused me to get locked up and go to prison. Being somebody with, in the crew with a, with a C, turn into an informer, snitch. Okay, that's, you see that's coming from? obstacle? Yeah. That's the one you yeah. feel on you? Yes. Mm. So now, I was exposed. Now the police know I gone from burglary to robbery right now. So now, I will come back 
and stop doing robbery and start doing human visions. So now I'll go in the spirit of human vision, human vision, human visions, and then something will come up. So and then the difference between okay, robbery. The difference and between human vision. the difference between robbery will you will go to an establishment like probably a gas station and you would run up inside there with a mask and rob the establishment. You the, did the, stuff like that. Mm, <laughs> All right. So, but like that's the, we talk about the difference okay. between it. So, so it's like it's like you just you know do something like that. But a home invasion would be like you would wait till everybody home, mommy, daddy, children, and you would get inside the house mm -hmm. and you would hold everybody hostage and okay. probably take them to the to the ATM machine, oh, clean out the ATM, yeah, withdraw okay. money. Oh, okay take all the valuables and stuff okay. like that. It's the same thing, thing, but you just use... Yeah, different. but no, see, it's like, it's, it's, it's different in, 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 let's see... Is that still robbery? Yeah, the court, no, but the court system mm -hmm. will not classify it as, okay. as robbery. Okay. They will call it, they will call it human invasion, okay. which will carry a more lengthier okay. time. You, you know what I do when it comes oh, to Yeah, that's problem. why I'm trying to really mm -hmm. break it down in the right terminologies, because mm -hmm. like, like the robbery, you yeah you endangering a lot of people because then sometimes you might just have the the, the store clerk there you say saying but when you look at it you 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 damage somebody for life man you damage yeah. like you damage the little child you yeah. damage the mom yeah. the dad traumatize them you know what I mean yeah so at the end of the day is like a whole they deal with you whole different in the system you say saying so so. Wow. Yeah, and see the thing about it is like you heartless at those times is like it's like the 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 mentality you have is just like like to be honest, I never had the mentality that I can come to kill nobody. Like oh I can kill somebody, you know? I never I thank God for that much. I never really had the mentality to come really saying and damage like like it's like never you mean you mean more shed blood, you say saying? So so you, but, but then you carry a gun with you. Yeah, so it's possible. You can it's, it's possible, and then, and 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 see a lot of that happen in the, in the in the country where people lose their life and things like that. Some people even lose their life innocently because like the person mentality is so corrupt. They done so poison to where they just say, do they live a life to where they just want to say they catch a body? Yeah. So how did you get a gun? Basically, basically, you know, it's like guns there, you get it. <laughs> Guns there, you get it. It's like, it's like, you know, it ain't originated. It wasn't built in, 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 in Turks and Caicos, obviously. It came in illegally and people just selling it illegally and mm. you just buy it and purchase it, you know? And like, and like, to be honest, that type of mentality, you basically want a gun because of the lifestyle you was living so you need it you say oh i need this for my protection, protection. Oh, okay for my protection but at the end of the day you know you have a gun or don't have a gun when it's when, when it's time for you to get get you get get you know so i look at it as see the different stages mm -hmm. it went from burglary then it went to human no robberies okay. then it went to human visions and then it went to a place where I just was like, man, I can't, you know, I can't live this lifestyle no more. So, like, what? Okay. It didn't happen overnight. So no, it didn't happen overnight. How did you reach that point where you... You know when say, you reached... Because I remember, you know, you were coming to church. Mm -hmm. And I guess at that time, everybody was, thought you yeah, were Yeah, yeah. It, 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 so let me show you something with change. Change come with failure too, you know. Change come with falling down to you know because let me show you let me show you the the, the realness in this is be like man I, I I need to change but then you go on a route of trying to change Especially but guess what exactly but guess what your pass rate on your heel your pass rate on your heel I now what you're saying, cause some you go to prison there's no reform no rehabilitation none it's, and none uh, your mind is the same exactly and Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. so you really so, get any help. Yeah, so, going so, and I always, the reason why, all right, I can make this picture so big. The reason why, when, when you met me at church and things like that, 
I believe that to get spiritual, I believe that God had a better purpose for me. And I was, at that, at that time, I was trying to seek it out. And, and at the end of the day, God's purpose was there, and the devil still was, mm -hmm. if people want to believe, if they want to be honest. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's, yeah. That's right. So here we go again with the, the exactly. There. Here we go again with the, with the, the voices. The voices. The voices. So God voice was like, was getting through this time. So I say, all right, again, again. How I knew about community fellowship is because what my my sister I after is the fourth child of my mom. My sister I after she used to go to community fellowship when when we was like way younger and this was like before I really got wild. So I was like, you know what? I can try to visit that church too and things like that. And I started to visit the church. Things was going good and things like that. But then after that, I, I, I actually even got, I started working at the Ritz Carlton, building it and stuff like okay. that. Yeah, I start, things start to progress and things like that. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I, I, I fail. Yeah. Straight up, I fail. When I fail, I had two choices. Stay stuck or try again. Mm. Stay stuck or try again. And... Let's say I didn't I like stay that. stuck. I, like I try stuck. again. I try. Yeah, I try again. I try again. And it's like in life, this goes out to the parents. Don't never make your children to a place where they feel like something so ashamed they will not come and talk to you about it. And it's like you end up in an establishment like a church or an or, or outreach that basically was helping you out. And you end up failing, and you feel so ashamed. You didn't want to go back around them people. That's a poison. That's that's a dangerous thing. You see what I'm saying? That's why you didn't come back to the church? Yeah, because then because you felt ashamed. I felt ashamed because then basically at the end of the day I had to remember. And you feel like nobody would trust you. All of that, all of that. But then at the end of the day, if I do really think about it, who I was really doing it for? Not them. It was something personal between me and God. Sure. At first, what the prodigal son say, and if we, if we, if we, you know, we might have a Bible audience or the, the prodigal son say, "Well, look here, before you even say, Father, I sin against you,' he say, sin against heaven, mm -hmm. and then you. So if I really think like that, like you know what, God, I mess up in, right. in your sight first. But I'm thinking people. Yeah. You see where you're coming from? I understand. Yeah. So, so. But how I get to in this seat right here, right now, mm -hmm. is not of Lorenzo. Strictly God. Because and how, how did you turn to God? I can tell you right now. I can remember it like yesterday. I, I, I end up in a situation and the situation was leading me into a, a, a let's say, a relapsed state. And Basically, I was going back down the same pattern. You say, Sam? Uh-huh. And God have a way to reach people. I can tell you that straight up. God have a way to reach people. I was so tormented. I was like, it was like everything I was doing bad is in the drugs, alcohol. Everything I was doing it was like just have me tormented. It was like I was running from my own shadow. I, I was like this close to going and seeing. See, this right here is a level of sin. I know how some people get stuck and crazy. Crazy is a beginning, you know, and it's a getting stuck and crazy too, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a getting out from going crazy. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense mm -hmm. because I can tell you this right now. I was literally hearing voices that, oh, this this, this person will kill you, this, this, this situation, here yeah, you can die, and this and that, and all that, and the other. But it was in reality. It was a, a, a mind frame, you see what I'm saying? A state of mind, you see what I'm saying? So I end up to a point where I run into a resort. I run into a resort, and I don't really want to call the places That's of these fine. things, you see what I'm saying? So I just, I, I run into this resort, and I was, I was literally hearing gunshots and smelling the, the, the gun smoke, the gunpowder, and none of this was happening in reality. None of this was happening in reality. So I could tell you to the place where 
I was literally going insane. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I got arrested and the people was like, they didn't want to press no charges against me or nothing like that, nothing like that. And because I didn't really do nothing out of the way, you see what I'm saying? And we, I mean, the police and the system really need to take situations serious. Where when they see certain things like this happening, instead of just releasing, they need to start seeing if they can call a counselor, call a pastor, or, or really just don't let that person go like that because you don't even know what that person going through. Right. Because the then, right? No, because the person then I was in change, but it, it was like I was fair to release. You see what I'm saying? I was, I was saying, okay, they, they holding me, they locked me up, and while I was locked up, I still was going through a state of mind. You see what I'm saying? And let me, let me let you know this. When I was released, it got worse. You see what I'm saying? So now I end up in a situation where let's just say my back was against the wall. Yeah. And I end up running down the streets and I was in a state of tripping. That's mm -hmm. what they would have called it. Mm -hmm. Tripping, right? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even on no, 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 no. I was, I think I was, I was, I was no, on. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah you see what I'm saying? But my mind was, my mind was telling me like, certain. Almost like a mental breakdown. Okay, yes, that's what I had. And I end up inside of the great space script. And I run into the store. Because the only thing I said, I can kill myself before they oh, kill wow. me. I said I can kill myself. And this was a setup by the devil. I said so I can kill thoughts. The suicidal thoughts came by thinking, see, the, the pattern of my mind was like, that these, gonna kill yeah, you. they was coming to so kill before me. They kill you, right? Before they killed me, I was going to kill myself. So I grabbed a bottle, I tried to, and see, God's hand was in this. Because had I grabbed a stronger bottle of rum off that, 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 that kind of, I mean, shelf or whatever, I don't think I would have been here today. I, mean, I, I, I just grabbed a bottle of wine. It was a wine that my hand grabbed that day. You see what I'm saying? And I, I just drink the wine. And I, and I just watching these cars come in. And I, I, I then run out to the road. Maybe. One car missed me. Then I see this big bus coming. And let me let you know something. Were you doing this? Like people see me doing this, but they, they, they like just watch. Probably they published recording for, 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 for Facebook and social media. That's what the world going on to now. They ain't nobody can intervene. Everybody won't get something on social media. So at the end of the day, I could, I could vouch for this. That everything somebody going through, contemplating, God's spirit is be there talking. And the devil's spirit is be there talking. Because the devil telling me, the dead spirit telling me, do this, do it, do it. And I hear there's no silent but strong spirit say you jump in the front of that bus you you kick hell door open today and it's, it's, it's like i was like boy that's true because that's the only thing you commit it's people in the outside the room see what's going on in the inside you see what i'm saying uh -huh. so I, I i the bus come and the bus passed me i talk about under power the bus passed me so i i pass out i ran i pass out the police i i can never forget this police officer and i still respect him up to today i see a big shout out to him you see i ain't calling his name or nothing like that but this police he came he's like man i could hear him i conscious you know but they're thinking i'm conscious and i lay on my sister porch thank god for some 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 good family you have mm -hmm. i want to put that in there too and while I was laying out, I think I didn't even have no shirt or nothing like that on. And my sister, she was in trust letting me in the house. And I didn't blame her. Because she didn't know what was going on. But she gave me one long sleeve shirt and stuff like that. And that night, I, I, I told my cousin. I went to my cousin. Like I started, to, I was in paranoia. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like so, hallucinating? Yes, I was so hallucinating. And I told my cousin, I said, hey, man, somebody won't kill me and things. Call the police. Tell the police, man, this and that and that and the other. And I just wanted to tell the police something for them to arrest me and hold me. It's not like I wasn't telling them nothing in, of facts. You see what I'm saying? Just wanted I just wanted to be, to be in a place. Yes, in a place where I felt like I could have maintained my composure. You see what I'm saying? I could have. And in and, and, and reality, I didn't have to do none of this, you know. Mm. But it was just like, it was like, 
it was like I can't see plain people like they like say oh the devil the devil I, it was the hands of God mm. it was the hands of God because God knew the calling that he have on my life so I believe just like how he could have sent that tormenting spirit to, 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 to Saul and, and the Bible scholars and people, the religious people or the really people who connect to God, but they will understand by right, coming from, or, or from this point of view. Just like how that spirit came and torment Saul, I had a spirit tormenting me. Mm. And the spirit wasn't tormenting me to the place where, because we, we see, I still alive, the same, the same no, no ghost right us. Just Lorenzo in the flesh. So, what I'm saying is, now, listen, that's the most, that's the most amazing part of this, my whole life story. I end up, I end up in the jail cell. I, I was so par paranoid still. Mm -hmm. I look inside the cell. There was two guys in there. One guy was laying down with a, with like a hoodie or something like that over his head. You couldn't tell me that guy wasn't the guy who they done sent before me to try to kill me. He sent him ahead of me. You know what I said? So I was like, man, officer, man, I don't want to go in that cell, man. And I done try to give them all kind of stories. Two boys in the cell, you know. And, and, and the guy, and, and he's like, boy, Lorenzo, boy, you done here, boy, you got to go in the cell. I was like, man, them dudes, them dudes won't beat me, man. Them dudes won't this and one that. Them dudes don't know me. They don't know me. They don't know me. So, so I end up inside the cell. When I end up inside there, I get to figure out the two guys. And one of the guy, he was like, he was in tune with God, so to say. And like, he started to talk some positive thoughts and stuff like that. And, and so we just start reasoning and things. We start praying and stuff like that. And you know what? I went and I had a private prayer, private conversation with God. And I was saying, Father God, I don't know where to turn after this. I don't know where to go, what to do. And people that say, God don't talk. I can be a living testimony to say God is talk. Mm -hmm. Because God told me the church that I was going to, because I, after coming, going to a community fellowship, I started going to firm foundation ministry. Mm -hmm. So. God told me, go in the churchyard. Mm -hmm. I was like, go in the churchyard. It's like, anyways, you say it. See, obedience and disobedience, they, they yield different fruits. My disobedience caused me to be in the place where I was, and I finally obey God. The, the people come, the police had the shackles on my feet. They took me out of the cell. They don't know how. I don't even know how. They took them shackles off of me. The same day they took the shackles off of me. But the enemy was still at work. Mm -hmm. See, when they take that shackle off of me, the, the, the one of the officers, that's why I don't, I respect that. One of the officers tried to pen a poison seed in my head. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, you don't want to do this and you don't want to do that. You can go right out there and end up in this and that. And try to speak a bad situation of my head. You know, why, you know why I tell them? I say, hey, that's on now. God, God knew. He He gave me back Your mind. my mind. Mm -hmm. My He gave me my sanity back. You see what I'm saying? So I had a fifty dollars with them, them guys was giving me because I thought they was going to kill me down by CID, and they gave me fifty dollars to bring something back for them to eat. So as I thought, the enemy now. If I don't listen to the enemy, the enemy would have want me to go and take that money go get drugs and fail. By going there, I stop right over by, by one of the restaurants close to the police station. I buy some food and stuff like that. I spent literally the whole $50 mm -hmm. on the guys mm -hmm. and I carried back for them. Okay. I give them their food and stuff like that and I left. I left with not a, with not a dollar in my pocket. I walk from Chalkstown police station and you know where I was headed? At the churchyard. Mm -hmm. So before I even reached the churchyard, there was a deacon in our church he passed me walking walking and he like he realized that was me he turned around so let me just say you have some mighty people of god still out there doing their work and when he turned around he's like brother Lorenzo, i see you and this and that and that and the love that i asked that i that i felt from them automatically it, it I, I i was like i was melting you see what i'm saying Happy so time. yeah so they they took me inside of the van and they um they went and they said where are you going I said, man, um, I went in the churchyard. I don't, you know, I don't know. I went in the churchyard. He took me to uh, one of the establishments, gave me some food and stuff like that, and they left me by the churchyard. And 
while I was by the churchyard, I just was like, I still felt a little paranoia, but at the same time, I said, well, God, if this is what you tell me to do, if anything do happen to me, this is what you tell me to do. Mm. Let me, let me, let me, if whatever, like all of the dead thoughts and all of the people after me, it just vanished. Oh, wow. It vanished, to be honest. That's so I, yeah, I, so I kind of get strong. So now, while I was there, one of the brothers from the church, he come, he see me, he's like, Brother Lorenzo, what happened? I see all kind of things on Facebook where the police put up. And that was, that was a bad thing that police did to me too. They was like, oh, they, 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 they see you calling this one name, that one name, but it wasn't no true. Because see, even, see, the, the reputation that I ever had in the streets, nobody would ever say Lorenzo was an informer or a snitch, you say what I'm saying? But if, like, I, I don't even want to get into that. If you know some information which you need to share, share. But at the end of the day, I never had myself in a position where I really ever bring nobody down with me or bring somebody down. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So people from the streets would have been like, mm, nah, we, we know him know Lorenzo probably was, was, was going through a little trip in stage, but we know he ain't, mm -hmm. you know, facts to what he was saying because they couldn't have pinpoint nobody. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the enemy attacked my character, the enemy attacked my name, the enemy attacked every part of me broken yeah. i was broken i was broken i i was so broken i remember when i saw that Ex so, okay again. okay yes yeah. yeah, sir and I, I i feel like it's it's, it's humbleness you see what i'm saying so now this that's the most amazing part of the story too so the guy when he tell me all of that i didn't even know it because then i didn't have a smartphone or nothing like that so i got paranoia all over again i got paranoia all over again because i was like what i was like boy I hope, I hope, you know what I mean? I, I was like, boy, it's, it's impossible for anybody to believe that. You know what I mean? Mm. I was hoping that, that my reputation really would have speak for me, you see what I'm saying? As in uh, not being an informant or whatever, you see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, two sisters, it was a, it was a evangelist and a sister from the praise team. Mm. When I tell you, I experienced love for the first time in my life other than my mother original love mm -hmm. was two these two sisters God sent oh, my wow. way they was like um they start ministering to me they start ministering to me they start feeding me God word which is power so I start to regain back mm -hmm. my composure you see my mind started yeah. to get set back mm -hmm. so after that, they was like, man, we can't leave you, man. We're not going to leave you. So they contact the bishop. Bishop contacts such, such and such, one of the elders. And everybody got together. So I, I don't want nobody to say that the church ain't doing nothing. Because let me let y'all know something. The church always there, but we as gangsters running away from the church door. But you see what had to happen to me for me to run to the church? Mm -hmm. But the church door was ever open. Up to today, the yeah. church door opened, and and the people of the uh, uh, and the people in the church still out there in the streets. We see every day, but we avoid them because of because we live in darkness, and we and we and we want to stay in that darkness so we can run from the light. So I don't want I don't I, I just don't want nobody mm -hmm. blame the people of God because they doing what they doing. Yeah. I'm a living testimony of it. I agree with you. On that. They, they yeah. got a they got a they got a motel for me that night just to keep me up for that night. They fed me and everything like that. And within that motel, I, I didn't I didn't I take every opportunity I had to to to, to thank God to talk to God to communicate with God because because I didn't live long enough to know that hey. I'm not doing this for nobody no more. I don't yeah. been through that phase. I'm not trying to look for no 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 ticket to just get back here to go back there. I really, really, you truly inside it. myself wanted, wanted to get yeah. out of it. Yeah. You understand? And I like how you talk about love. Mm -hmm. You know, love mm -hmm. covers multitude of sins. So, yes, and sir. love is the answer. God is love. Yes, yeah, sir. And there's too much there's too much hatred in our, mm -hmm. in our country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not only our country. Well, why? Well, why? But if we could just not just say you love someone, show them you love them. Yeah. And yeah. I believe that is why a lot of people are even um, drawing to to the hood as you speak. Exactly. Or mm -hmm. the, or mm -hmm. the gangs because maybe those people are showing some sort of love. Some, some, yeah, and it's fake yeah. love. Yeah, it's not it's, real. It's not real. Yeah, you think it's real. The mm -hmm. love is the key. 
is it is it is, is. two sisters Mm-hmm. Showed you love, mm-hmm. you demonstrated love is, and it transformed me. It transformed me because at that time I thought it was going to be condemnation and things like that. And I'm trying to put you on the spot, but it come back to my mind. I remember I I I put you to the test and asked you certain things, and I was shocked when you come through. I was like, my God, you blessed me with some money. You said it, yeah, and yeah. I was like. Through that, that money right there, I was like, man, I, I can't feel good to do something exactly. bad. I, I put you to the test, to be real. <laughs> <aware. laughs> to be real, to be real. You passed the test, though. Because at the end of the day, regardless of where or what I did with the money, when you go before the Father, you know that you fed somebody. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, God can be telling some people, man, get from around me because you didn't feed me, you didn't visit me, you didn't this and you didn't that. I'm trying to put you out there like that, right? But I just was saying some of that when i look at things like that then somebody do something genuine for somebody who either corrupt or something like that it is a process of getting that corruption over that person you know it is the it's a it's a it's, it's a it's a word I, never about that way, it, but... I tell you because i've been through it i was like oh my god i mean this bro really come through and really do this for me mm. you know but then like, i got back to the original point that i was making to because I thought these sisters could have been coming down on me as in right. saying, they didn't. They, they didn't. didn't. They was no. like, they, I mean, one I of the that. sisters shared her testimony that. with me and shared some things to me. I was, I was like, boy, I was I like, you know. Yeah. So, so I rededicate my life back to God, and thought. and that was like in and April. Now you're an usher. Yeah, that was like in April of of twenty twenty two. The twenty twenty two. And I could say that was one of my worst months that transformed to become one of my best wow, months. This is incredible, Lorenzo. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. I always encourage you, Lorenzo. You talk about the two voices. Mm-hmm. I want to always encourage you, you know, to stay focused. Yeah. And listen to the voice of God. Because yeah. you always, the enemy can always try to yep, yep. remind you of your past. Yep. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm so glad mm-hmm. that um, you've transformed. Yep. And, and yep. you've given your life over. Uh, you know, getting and starting a job. Yeah. Uh, yep. and, and for those who are watching the show, I thank you for the encouragement hmm. that you're giving to um, everyone out there, yep. even to me. Um, I've never done drugs, hmm. never done alcohol, yes. uh, but is it? But it is an it, it is an encouragement. Mm-hmm. Okay. And 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 I just hope that um, I just hope that this show inspires others. Yep. I believe it has. Yeah. And thank you, Lorenzo. You didn't have to come and do this. All right. But you did. Yeah. All right. Any um, closing remarks? Well, yeah, I have a closing remarks and that's like what I, I want to scratch I want to scratch this to say stop blaming the church saying or oh, only now that all these things happening, the church won't come and have street meeting and do this and do that. Know that the church door was open from day one. The people in the church there from day one. So I know y'all won't get out. I know y'all won't get off of the drugs and out of the streets and out of their life. Y'all gotta make the choice and make it today. Make it today. Don't even self try put it on the church or try put it on the people of the church. Put it on yourself and being responsible to say the choice is mine and make the change. That's it. Thank you, Lawrence. Some very good closing remarks. And for all of you are watching, I just want to say thank you for watching the show. And I also want to encourage you that no matter what you do, that you one day someone will catch you. Yeah. You might think that you know you'll never get caught. Mm-hmm. And so we go living this style. We go stealing. We go killing. We go robbing people, yep. thinking, "Oh, I'm not going to get caught." Mm-hmm. But one day you'll meet your match. Yes. But you don't have to reach that point in your life. What you can do right now is to change your life. It may not happen overnight because you're going to be tempted, you know, but you could try. Lorenzo prayed when he was in prison and, mm-hmm. and God told him to go to the churchyard and he went there. I don't know what God is telling you. Some of you may not believe in God, but I'm telling you, if you just turn to God, find someone you can confide in and transform your life. The life that you, we are that you're living, it's not gonna be. It's not good for you. Being on drugs is not good for you. Um, I know make 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 you feel good. I don't know how it feels, but hmm. but there's a better life for you. And I would encourage individuals out there. I encourage fathers to 
you know, to, to be there for your, 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 your children. There are some single mothers who have done all they can to raise their children, who have done a very, very good job in raising their children. But a child needs both parents. Do your part. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching the show.